Hello Planeswalkers, Tyler here, and today I'm bringing you another episode of Tribal Talk. On this show, I look at an underutilized or underappreciated creature tribe in Magic and examine what support they currently have and what themes they might share and how I think they could be given more support. Before I move on, let's see how Wizards defines a tribe. According to the official MTG Wiki, a tribe is defined as magic slang for a block, set, or deck with a mechanical theme centered around one or more creature types. For today's episode, we're looking at everyone's favorite snappy beach dweller, the humble crab. But first, we must ask ourselves, what are crabs? Well, according to the official MTG Wiki, Crab is a creature type used for various predominantly marine crustaceans characterized by a broad flattened head and trunk covered by a hard carapace with a small abdomen concealed beneath it, short antenna, and five pairs of legs, of which the anterior pair are large and pincer-like. As a starting point, let's look at the members of the tribe we currently have grouped together into several categories. Our first batch are our vanilla creatures, or the ones that have no abilities whatsoever. These include the Jawari Scuttler, a 2-3 for 2 and a blue, Fortress Crab, a 1-6 for 3 and a blue, Armored Cancrix, a 2-5 for 4 and a blue, Ancient Crab, a 1-5 for 1 blue blue, and Wishcoin Crab, a 2-5 for 3 and a blue. While these all lack any abilities, they do all share the common feature of lower power, higher toughness, something we'll see regularly through most crabs and will serve as the base for our deck strategy later on. Our next batch is a little unique in that we're focusing on a surprising amount of creatures we got from the Simic Combine on Ravnica. A guild famous for its mismatching and combination of creature types, the Simic have given us Growth Chamber Guardian, a 2-2 Elf Crab Warrior for 1 in a green with Adapt 2 that can search for more copies of itself, which, let's face it, it's kinda useless in Commander, Shark to Crab, a 4-4 Shark Octopus Crab for 2 green blue, who taps down an opponent's creature for a turn whenever it has a plus 1 plus 1 counter placed on it. Shamble Shark, a 2-1 Shark Crab for green and a blue with flash and evolve, and who is our only crab with power outweighing its toughness. Skitter Eel, a 3-3 Fish Crab for 3 and a blue with adapt 2. And Scuttle Gator, a 6-6 Crab Turtle Crocodile with Defender for 4 Simic Simic, that also has a DAP 3 and can attack as though it didn't have Defender if it has a plus one plus one counter. The Simic also care about growth, which is why it's always measured as plus one plus one counters whenever they're part of a set and they get their own mechanic, but I think it's another thing that we can build on. Aside from Shamble Shark, every Simic Crab Mutant has power and toughness equal to each other, something that can be chalked up to the Crab's defensive nature being combined with the more offensive creatures like Sharks and Crocodiles. Our penultimate group of crabs are the ones that have abilities, be they related to the set or otherwise, that feel like something they should have thanks to them being a crab. I'll run through them real quick and then we'll look at their abilities. This batch includes Skittering Crustacean, Giant Crab, High Tide Hermit, Salvage Scuttler, Horseshoe Crab, Crustacean, and Purple Crystal Crab. Skittering Crustacean is a 2-3 for 2 and a blue that has Monstrosity 4. It also says that if it's monstrous, it has Hexproof. Hexproof and Shroud are used for crabs to stand in for their thick armor, with only the biggest ones getting the ability to signify just how thick their armor is, so the Crustacean gaining Hexproof after becoming a 6-7 makes sense, since it's implied to get much larger and thus much thicker. Our next creature is the Giant Crab, a 3-3 for 4 and a blue that can give itself Shroud for a single blue. While not as big as the previous entry, its name implies that the crab is bigger than it probably should be, and can take up a defensive position if someone tries to come at it. Next are the High Tide Hermit and the Salvage Scuttler, both members from Kaladash block. The Hermit is a 4-4 defender for 4 and a blue that gives you 4 energy counters when it enters the battlefield, and who can let you pay 2 energy to let it attack as though it didn't have defender. And the Scuttler has both the same stat line and casting cost, and who lets you bounce an artifact back to your hand when it attacks. The Hermit, who's shown wearing a very heavy shell, makes sense since it requires much more energy for it to move on its own, rather than defend itself from a single spot, thus needing to expend energy. 
and the scuttler lines up since it too is a hermit crab, and its flavor text implies that it takes the artifacts back to its cave or home to later use them as shells. Horseshoe crab is a 1-3 for 2 and a blue that can untap itself for a single blue. Horseshoe crabs are prone to getting flipped over, and they need some help to get flipped back right side up because of the shape of their shell, so using a single blue to untap them could be seen as a friendly way of flipping our little friend back over so he can continue on his merry way. Crustacean is a 1-6 for 3 and a blue with flash, whose flavor text implies it hides along the shoreline to ambush prey, so it adds up. Finally, Purple Crystal Crab is a 1-1 for 1 and a blue that lets you draw a card when it dies. Having a shell made of beautiful purple crystal, this death trigger can be seen as you walking away with a piece of its valuable shell after it's passed on. Most of these abilities can be seen as kind of a hodgepodge of unrelated abilities, and to a degree they are, but the creatures themselves can still work relatively well with each other, as well as the ones that we've already listed. All of them are blue, keeping us squarely in the blue-green color pair we've established thanks to the Simic. They all either have equal power and toughness, or their toughness outweighs their power, save for you, Shamble Shark. And they all bring some unique kicks to the tribe that make them valuable set pieces for the deck. Now, let's look at our last batch of creatures and see how the cohesion holds up. Our final batch of creatures are crabs with abilities, but that don't necessarily need the crab creature type. Hedron Crab is a 0-2 for a single blue that mills someone for 3 when a land enters the battlefield under your control, for whatever reason. Chrome Shell Crab is a 3-3 for 4 and a blue that can be cast face down for 3 generic mana as a 2-2 and then later flip face up for 4 and a blue as a morph to exchange the control of a creature you control and an opponent controls, again for unknown reasons. King Crab is a 4-5 for 4 blue blue that hates green creatures apparently since you can pay 1 in a blue and tap the crab to put a green creature back on top of its owner's library. That being said, given the small amount of green creatures we have, this could also be seen as some form of protection. Thassa's Emissary is a 3-3 enchantment crab for 3 in a blue that can either come down with its own body or enchant another creature for 5 in a blue and give it plus 3 plus 3. It also draws you a card when it or the enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player. Iceberg Cancrix is a 0-4 snow creature for 1 in a blue that mills someone for 2 whenever you put another snow permanent into play. Drownyard Behemoth and Vexing Scuttler are a pair of Eldrazi crabs, the former being a 5-7 for 9 generic and the latter being a 4-5 for 8 generic. Both come with the alternate casting cost of a merge, with the Behemoth being 7 in a blue and the Scuttler being 6 in a blue. Emerge was the Eldrazi mechanic from Eldritch Moon that allowed you to sacrifice a creature when you cast the Emerge creature for its Emerge cost, and subtract the sacrifice creature's CMC from the generic cost in the Emerge creature's Emerge cost, implying the Eldrazi tore itself out from the inside of something else. On top of that, the Behemoth has Flash and Hexproof when it enters the battlefield, and the Scuttler lets you grab an instant or sorcery from your grave back to your hand when it's cast. To be fair, the Behemoth probably could have gone into the previous group since its abilities line up with what we've seen from the previous crabs, but the Scuttler lined up more with the Eldrazi side, and I kind of wanted to keep the two of them together. To make up for that, Oroxid is a 2-3 crab beast for 3 and a blue with protection from red, so aside from his base color and his stat line, he has absolutely nothing to do with how crabs play. Wormfang Crab is a 3-6 unblockable nightmare crab for 3 and a blue that came from a cycle of nightmares that made you give up resources when they entered the battlefield and who gave them back to you when they left. In the case of the crab, an opponent chooses a permanent you control to exile when the crab enters and you get that permanent back when the crab leaves. Like Araxid and the Vexing Scuttler, aside from the Wormfang's base color and stat line, it plays more with the cycle it was a part of rather than its snippy brothers. Our final crab is the Riptide Crab, a 1-3 for 1 blue white, with Vigilance who draws us a card when it dies. In addition to bringing a whole third color into this mix, no other crab has Vigilance, and while the Purple Crystal Crab had a flavorful reason behind drawing us a card on death, Riptide is ugly as sin and doesn't get the same courtesy. That all being said, having white does give us access to a very key card that we'll touch upon here in a bit and it does follow the line of higher toughness and lower power, so it gets a pass. For now. Also worth noting, Simic Key Rune is an artifact for 3 generic that can tap for either a green or a blue, and for green and blue, can turn into a 2-3 crab artifact creature, so in a pinch, <laughs> get it? It can bolster our crab forces. 
So with all of our creatures laid out in front of us, we can start to put together a theme for more crab support to make them more viable. I've harped before about the use of generic tribal support, cards like Icon of Ancestry or Arcane Adaptation, but I want something more in line flavor-wise with crabs, so we don't just end up with a basic tribal shell <laughs> did it again, that any tribe can be plugged into. That results in decks that are just too samey and boring, which isn't why I play tribal builds. If I play dragons, I want to feel like I have an army of dragons circling overhead ready to attack at my command. If I play zombies, I want to feel like a necromancer, raising the undead to do my bidding and bringing back my fallen creatures over and over again. If I'm playing crabs, I want... So, what common themes do we have that work well? Well, for starters, let's look at color identity. Every single one of our crabs has blue in its color identity, so that's a no-brainer. Our next most common color is green, thanks to the Simic, so we can have that as a secondary color. Finally, thanks to Riptide Crab, we have white, which actually helps us. See, since almost every single one of our crabs either has equal power toughness or higher toughness, thanks for being the one blemish, Shamble Shark, I want to briefly look at another tribe, the Tree Folk, specifically the legendary Doran the Siege Tower. See, Tree Folk also fall in line of toughness over power, and as such, cards like Doran make use of that by letting Tree Folk use their toughness for combat rather than their power. So I think we can do the same for crabs. Having access to white and green means that we can use cards like High Alert and Assault Formation, turning things like our Crustacean effectively into a 4-mana 6-6, six, six, or Hedron Crab into a 1-mana 2-2 two, two with Upside. Another tribe I want to look at briefly is Bears. Like crabs, bears have a bunch of vanilla creatures, namely multiple functional reprints of the 2 2 for 2 vanilla grizzly, and Ayula, the end all be all legendary bear commander, rewards you for playing these basic low drop creatures by letting them fight or making them bigger. I want to borrow this aspect for our hypothetical legendary crab. Speaking of the hypothetical legendary crab, let's take a quick example of something that could possibly work. Here we can see Sir Pinchy, Beach Lord. A 1-8 for 2 blue blue blue, he immediately plays into our theme of crabs having much higher toughness. For a blue, he can give himself hexproof, as well as put hexproof counters on crabs that we have entering play this turn, meaning even our swarm of vanillas have at least something going for them, allowing us to more easily power them up with enchantments or equipment. For a white, Pinchy can give our creatures plus 0 plus 2 until end of turn, an effect reminiscent of the Sunscape Familiar which itself is a white card. So the effect makes sense color-wise. Finally, for a green, Pinchy can make our creatures assign combat damage based on toughness rather than power, basically turning himself into an 8-8 or giving an impressive power boost to the rest of our shellfish army. Combined with his white ability, our crabs are a force to be reckoned with. Crabs tend to be one of Blue's common big toughness creature types that we see in numerous sets, so I think that getting more powerful crabs at higher rarities would also help. Creatures that are much hardier than their common counterparts, or who bring more to the table. Maybe something based off the Japanese spider crab that has reach, or a coconut crab that has trample. There's more of these creatures than just the common hermit crabs, river crabs, or beach crabs, so it'd be fun to see other species magic could get a hold of. My last point before signing off is for more redundancy. Cards like the previously mentioned High Alert and Assault Formation, as well as the enchantments like Tree Folk Umbra, are fantastic for creature types like crabs. Give us more things that generally care about toughness or that can spread more types of counters like what we saw in Ikoria and Commander 20. Crabs are scavengers, so giving them things like bonuses for artifacts or gaining things like hexproof or indestructible counters could play into their theme of gathering what they can find and using it to defend themselves. All in all, I think crabs could be a really fun tribe to play, especially for people who like to play Toughness Matters decks like Arcades or Doran. They just get enough attention that they have a fairly decent amount of playables for a format like Commander, especially for the more dirtily pillow fort strategies. Maybe combine them with turtles for shell tribal, or pair them with homerids for revenge of the seafood scampi. Make your opponents pay for their crab rangoon with an army of angry pinchers and scuttling legs. Anyways, Planeswalkers, that's all I have to say on crabs. What tribe would you like to see covered in the future? Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like the video, maybe throw a sub our way, and ring that little notification bell so that you never miss an upload. Later, Planeswalkers!